Hey, what's up, Echo? I want to tell you a really quick story. About 18 months ago, Christy and I started the process of planting Echo Church. And one of the very first things we began to do was look for a facility or a building where we could call home or we could potentially meet in. One of those buildings are right behind me. It's on the corner of 3rd Ave and 13th Street Southeast, coincidentally right next to Christy's favorite coffee shop. How coincidental. We start asking God, is this the place that you want us to meet? And I felt like the Lord whispered something to me. And he said, he said this, Andy, I don't want you to renovate a building. I want you to start a church. I want you to plant a church. And that's exactly what we've been doing. But in this very moment, in this new season, I felt like the Lord has been whispering to me to prepare to buy and purchase a permanent solution. We're a portable church and we love it. At the same time, we feel like to be the most effective church that God wants us to be, that we need to find a permanent solution. And so I want to invite you to ask God how you could play a part. And honestly, what we're looking and we're asking you to do is, is to, to give to this initiative, to echo permanence, what we call here to stay. We feel like we're here in Rochester to make a difference for a, a long time and a permanent location will help us accomplish the vision and some of the dreams we have in our heart. If that's you today and you'd like to donate a million dollars, call me personally about that one, but uh, for the rest of us that can't do that, uh, would you go to our website and would you start giving something on a regular basis so we can be prepared to buy something permanent so that Echo is here to stay. If you do so, just click on that generous link and man, we want to go ahead and start saving in order to find a building and pay potentially for cash as God is in the midst of doing a miracle. Welcome to Echo Sunday Service. We love that you're here with us today. We are back with our summer playlist series as we listen to a conversation between Christy and Jamie. Normally you hear from Scott, but today we get to hear from the better half of the Shoals, the amazing Mrs. Jamie Shoal. She is speaking on a subject so relevant to today, celebrating in the Valley. And we get to hear from MTV's best new old artist of the year. He's known as Pastor Andy. He'll be joining his sister Katie covering a beautiful song by Morgan Harper Nichols. Your generosity continues to amaze us. Thank you for your tithes. Today, we want to touch on our generous initiative. We are beginning the process of what we call Echo Permanence. Right now, we are looking for a space to call home. In order to do that, we need to be prepared for that type of expense. And there is no better time to prepare than now. So we want to encourage you, would you give beyond your tithe today? Will you be a part of making this miracle happen? Head to our website below and select the line item, Generous. If you're new to Echo Sunday service, expect this to last about 35 minutes. We'll start with the Echo Band, Christy and Jamie will chat, we'll take a moment of reflection, and we'll wrap up hearing closing thoughts. Lastly, let us know how we can pray for you. Comment on this video or email us your prayer requests. Let's do this together. Good morning, Echo Church. My name is Hope Black, and this morning, the scripture that I want to share with you is from Psalm 16, verse 11, and I'm just going to go ahead and read it. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. This is just something that I think is so applicable for the times that we're living in where there's so much uncertainty and unrest. Um, and just one thing that I want to encourage you to do this week is just to continue to keep pressing into the presence of the Lord. Get into the Word read your Bible, listen to your Bible on the Bible app, turn on worship music, even when you don't feel like it in worship, um, because when we do that, we are entering into the presence of the Lord, and that's where we are gonna truly find joy. So I wanna encourage you and invite you this week to walk in the joy of the Lord with me. Hope you guys have a great week, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Our Father everlasting, the created one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I 
believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Judging our defender, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious life. Forever seated high. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus, I believe in you. summer playlist and so we thought it would be fun to hear from Jamie today. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. What song did you pick? I picked Storyteller by Morgan Harper Nichols. When did you hear the song for the first time? Um, I stumbled upon it somewhere. It must have been on Instagram or somewhere on Facebook. Someone posted it and um, I loved it as soon as I heard it. So can you read me some of the lyrics? Yeah, so one of my favorite parts of the song, um, it says, I'm remembering you were right there and you've been ever since. With every page that turns, I see your faithfulness. The mountain where I climbed, the valley where I fell, you were there all along. That's the story I'll tell. You brought the pieces together and made me this storyteller. It's good. She's good. So why did you pick that song? I think it's just super important. Um, Many of you know that Scott and I have a story, and we all have a story, and I think um, it's really important that that's something that we share with people. I think it brings um, people together, our stories do, and um, I, I just think there's power in telling our story. So when you hear that song, do you jam out to it, or is it more of a declaration of 
just that reminder to speak out? Like what, when you hear it, what, how does the song make you feel? Um, I usually cry every time it comes on. So it's, I would say it's a declaration. It's a, a powerful reminder of God being with us in the, um, in the high points of life and in the low points of life. And that he um, wants us to share that, that he doesn't just do these things in our lives for us to keep them to ourselves, but that he wants us to um, share with the world the things that he's done and the faithfulness that he he brings to our lives. Awesome. And did you pick a scripture to go along with it today? I did. So in Luke 8, 38 through 89, um, God, Jesus cast out a demon in a man, and the man, um, after the demons are cast out, he begged to go with Jesus. And I think there are days where all of us just want to be with Jesus. And he says to him, return home and tell how much God has done for you. And I think that's a call to all of us to, to um, find our community and to share with them all that God's done in our lives. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. So when you hear the lyrics of the song, and obviously you picked it for a lot of reasons, I think we can read these lyrics and think of our own story and the story that God's given us. What jumps out at you as far as maybe a lesson or just something that God's taught you? One of the things um, in my own life that I struggled with for many, many years was fear. And um, I think through Scott getting sick and me facing head on one of my worst fears, losing my husband, I was able to break a bondage that I felt like I had where everything, like I was always afraid. I was afraid of every time he got in the car, I worried that I wouldn't see him come home at night or, you know, anytime my kids left the house, I worried that something would happen to them. Or, and so after I, after we went through his illness in the beginning, I, I feel like the Lord took us through so many different steps in order to break that fear in my, in my own life. And now I, I see things through such a different lens. Um, in the song, it says, you hold the broken, you hear my every cry, my eyes are open. I know that it is well, it is well. And I think I've learned to live instead of in a state of fear, in a state of it is well. Mm -hmm. Like no matter what happens, um, good, bad, otherwise, it is well. Like God is faithful and, and he is, uh, wants to see good in our lives and so it is well. If you were to tell someone today that's listening and watching this, and let's say they're, when, I read, when you read those lyrics, you know, just being on a mountaintop or being in a low point, what would you say to them? as far as just like being through the storm, being in the valleys. I think my biggest takeaway and in this song, it says, I see your faithfulness. And literally like in every piece of our story, it's not just about Scott's sickness, but it's about us packing up and moving across the country, not once, but twice. And moving to cities we'd never lived in and we had no reason to go to, except for God's faithfulness and I've seen his faithfulness in every step along the way so I think that would be my biggest takeaway is that God is faithful in every in every step of your story even in the hard moments I don't think he just uses the good things but he uses the valleys I think even even more so
were to describe the word faithfulness, how would you describe it? In regards to God and who he is, I would say that it's just a never ending presence. Like he is always there. We can turn to him, we can see him, we can um, go to him. It's just a never ending presence in your life. So when you share that, I think of my own life and I totally agree where the moments, my biggest life lessons have been when I'm, when I'm the most dependent on God. And I think that that's when rubber hits the road where even we lean into our faith. It's, I think oftentimes it's really easy for, for me with my personality to want control. I think of even this season that I've been in this past year in 2020 with all the unknowns and thinking the year was going to be a certain way and just that dependency and that I feel that urgency to, to lean into God and to not quit. I think sometimes a mountain, like we trudge up a mountain and it can, we don't know how long it's going to take and we don't know how long we're going to be in the valleys. And that's the beautiful thing about life because I think of my life, there's been seasons, there's been years where I'm in certain, the desert or I'm in the valley. And it's just that the fear can creep in, the thoughts in our head, the what ifs, the exploring questions that we're even afraid to say out loud. And then it's those moments of surrender, of God shedding those things from me. And so I think that's really beautiful of what you shared. And I think that we all, when we hear that, we can think of our moments. I know for me, I always reference my life in those seasons. And it's just crazy because I'd say 90% of my lessons that God's taught me have been when I'm in my valley. And when I'm at my lowest points, when I want to quit or I don't feel like I'm strong enough and it's him carrying me through or it's my friends and my family carrying me through um, even just using their faith, cheering me on, Christy, you can do this. And so I, I just think that that is something that we all can take away right now and remember. And I think it's opening the word. It's asking God, what do you want me to learn in this season versus why am I in this season? I think, I think that's the power of the story, too. I think that helps. You know, if, if I've been through something and I come alongside you and I share what God's done in my life, it's just that much more compelling for you to dig into the Word, to walk with God, to listen to Him. You know, it's, uh, there's, just, there's so much power in us sharing um, the valleys we've been through and to help other people, you know, get back up on the mountaintop. If you were to identify like the number one thing you've learned when you've been in the valley you know you said faithfulness and like trusting God but going to Jamie when you're at like thinking back like when you're at your lowest point you know even physically on your knees or crying out to God or when you didn't know Scott was going to make it like what was that experience like for you looking back like do you feel like you were sharing your story through it or was it more because sometimes I feel like it can be almost private mm -hmm. and I, even just the power like you say is share the whole song is called storytellers but like using our voice I think it's sometimes it's sharing your story with God and letting him in on the journey sometimes it's the people around us like when you look back at that I think for us for me there was power and there was healing in sharing the story as we went along. I don't think it can always be that way. I think mm -hmm. sometimes it's a private, it's a private journey that is told later. But when it's other, someone else's story, like I felt like every time I shared, I had to get Scott's permission or, you know, when we were in that valley. And so, um, I, for me, it's, it's sharing the story as it goes, not necessarily just at the end when everything works out, but sharing. I mean, we shared the ups and we shared the downs and it was an up and down journey. It was, you know, we had some really good days and we had some really bad days. And um, I think there's power in the journey because it isn't, no one's story is point A, point B. There's like 85 points in between that, you know, the there's, you recover from something and then something else happens. And then, and that's how all of our stories are. And so I think, 
Um, I, for me, I think if you can, sharing the story as you go is where the power was. And it, it helps me to process and to grieve throughout it and then come out on the other side. And then also, I think my, one of my biggest lessons was the valley isn't forever. And I think it can feel like it when you're in the middle of it. I mean, there were days where I cried out to God, like, this is never going to end. And it always does. It always ends. And it doesn't always end how we want it to. There were moments in the journey that we wanted to go a certain way, and they didn't. And uh, so I think just, I think uh, surrender. I think when you said surrender, that was one of my other biggest lessons was, you know what, God, you are in control. I have to let go. I have to let you work this out. I have, there's nothing I can do to control the, the, how long or how short or how low or how high this journey goes. It's, it's all in your hands. And so for me now, when I'm in a valley season, even, you know, over the last few months, as you process and try to understand what, what God is doing, um, I always have hope. Like, when we know the Lord, we grieve and we journey with hope because at the end, there's, there's, there's something at the end for us. There's purpose at the end and there's, there's, um, there's a story in the whole thing and there's purpose in all of it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's been my, my greatest lesson is that the valleys aren't forever, mm -hmm. but that there, there is power and so much purpose in walking through them. Mm -hmm. That's great. I think too of like, okay, so our, the Bible is our manual. We say it's our lifeline. It has so much truth in it. It has all the foundational elements of how to live, what to do when we're in our valley. And I think of moments like when Scott gets diagnosed with something that blindsides you or just anything that we go through in our life. And it's, a, it's about, okay, God, I'm going to put this to work. Like, I'm going to apply what I've learned. Like, I've been in training for all these years, and now it's time for me to apply the word or apply the things that I believe. And I know for me, even as an outsider, because we were friends, and Jamie and Scott were living in Arizona. Andy and I are here in Rochester when this happened. And I remember reading the updates on the Caring Bridge website or checking in with you. You know, we're DMing and messaging each other. And it's, there is, and I 100% agree with you, there's so much power in the unpolished, unedited version of ourselves, of this is our story, this is the update. And I think it can be less, less overwhelming when it's the process of every day, or however often we check in with people where we're sharing versus this, well, we're going to, we're going to wait until the results are in, or we're going to wait until we've overcome this, or we're going to wait until you know, Scott's healed and he has, you know, a donor or whatever the case is. And even when I think of you, you have referenced that when you lived in Arizona for five years, you felt like it was a desert. You were living in the desert, but emotionally it was like a desert. Well, I don't, and I think even emotional health, well, I'm going to speak on depression or anxiety or just feeling broken when I'm over it, you know? And I think there's so much, I know for me, for my life, when I am sharing the process and it's still saying but God I don't know what's going to happen but God and it and I just think I know for me I resonate so much where I'm like I want to keep following Scott and Jamie because you're giving me life you're being real you're being authentic you're sharing the promises that God gives you and I think that that's a really great reminder for all of us to let people in to share our story and to take that time, whether it's journaling, whether it's being in the word, whether it's processing with a loved one, but just like letting people in on, a, in on it. Because I know for me, sometimes it's me letting people in and it's a person like you coming in and going, but God, I need to hear it from other people too. And so I think that's beautiful. Really good. I think too, celebrating along the way. You yeah. know, there were times where we had really great things happen and if I didn't share those things, no one could celebrate with us, yeah. you know? And so for me, it's really important to, even in the valley, to praise him yes. and to thank him and to uh, bring people along on the journey. It's easy to listen to someone's story from point A to point B, but if, you, if that's all you tell is what happened and the result, 
you miss all the goodness of God in between. And as hard as that valley was for us, there was so much goodness between the two points. There were so many incredible things that God was doing, even in the heart. Mm -hmm. But there were also really good moments in that that I knew I wanted to share with people and I wanted to encourage. And Thank you, Jamie, for reminding us that celebration is possible in the valley. In fact, I want to take a moment and show you that scripturally, this is actually what God wants us to do. So let's lean into Acts chapter 2. What we find in the context of the scripture that I want to read is we find Jesus' disciples are in the midst of a Jewish scheduled annual festival. Let me just rephrase it. It's like this big family gathering, this big family party where people from all around the known world come back to Jerusalem to, to remember what God has done. And the celebration that they are participating in is known as Shavat. We as Christians know it as Pentecost. And what people are doing is they're bringing their first harvest, their first part of their harvest, their grain harvest, and offering it to the Lord, just simply saying, thank you. We remember that you are a good God. And there Jesus' Jesus's disciples are waiting just as Jesus has instructed them, and they're gathering together, and all of a sudden God shows up, and the Holy Spirit fills them and fills the room, and their response is to bust out of that room and to begin to tell people about what God is doing. And there are two responses of what happens in this miracle moment. You can read about it. Uh, but in Acts 2, 9, that response is this, is people were totally amazed, and they were asking the question, how is this possible? Which, man, I think about our moment right now for us as Christians, as followers of Christ. If we can find joy, if we can find celebration in the valley, I can tell you this. People are going to say, how is this possible? And the other response was this, Acts 2.13, because it was so bizarre. As some people made fun of them, asking the question, have they had too much wine? I don't want to focus on this too much, but this wasn't an unheard of question because actually in those days, people would make bread, they would put it in water, they would throw in some yeast, and when it began to bubble, they would drink it immediately. And if you are a craft beer enthusiast, you know what's going on. They just made beer. And so for them to be drinking in the morning maybe wasn't completely out of the picture, but I want to tell you this is these celebrations that God ordained, yes, they were, they were serious and there were some solemn moments, but they were meant to be scheduled celebration no matter what was going on in their nation. See, they were full of joy, even in the midst of the most trying times. The question is this, is how is this possible? Because God desires for us to be full of joy and full of celebration. But I want to tell you a little bit about joy. We can't, number one, falsify joy and we can't fake fulfillment. That's not possible. Number two, we have to understand we're not able to create joy. Number three, we shouldn't confuse happiness with what true joy from God is. Let me say it like this. Joy that comes from a substance is only a substitute and no substance will sustain or satisfy you. I've learned that from my experience personally. And I want to tell you these last two things. Joy is a gift and joy is a promise from God. What I find absolutely intriguing is that Shavat is one of these celebrations that Jesus had participated in. His disciples are interacting with, but there's also one that came after the desert season here after Shavat that's known as Tabernacles. And in the book of John, we can find that Jesus is celebrating and really the, the, the last and the greatest day of this festival. And as the Jewish leaders are pouring out water and pouring out wine, they're doing this ritual Jesus stands up with a loud voice and he says this, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Now, let me help you understand this arid environment that Jesus lives in 
This point of the festival is at the end of the desert season and Jesus stands up and he says, if you are thirsty, come and drink. And if you believe in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from you. This is the promise that Jesus is making. See, Jesus invites us into that promise. Jesus is telling us that celebration is possible in the desert. It is possible in the valley as long as we lean into him. Let me just tell you this, this share this little picture. Every valley has a possibility of a stream. I mean, that's where the stream flows is typically in a valley. Every river is in essence a valley. And Jesus invites us to find celebration there. In the midst of our trial, in the midst of our tough times. And I believe celebration and joy and fulfillment is all found through Jesus Christ. And what he did for us on the cross and beyond and through really building a bridge so we can have a relationship with God. And for those that have not yet started a relationship with God or for those that need to restart a relationship with God, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me this morning. Jesus, I surrender. I have more questions than answers, but I choose to follow you anyway. I acknowledge that you lived, you died, and you rose again all with us in mind. I accept the rescue that you offer. Save me and lead me in Jesus' name and his authority. Amen. Let's take a few more minutes and allow Christy and Jamie to conclude their conversation. And it's that it's twisting things and looking at, looking at our life in a different lens. I mean, there's, we can all do that, let's be honest. And the things that we think matter that don't. Yeah. The thing, I mean, the greatest lessons your kids got to experience by walking through that valley with their mom and dad, but then that they get, they got to see God's faithfulness. So that's powerful. Thank you for sharing. Um, do you want to pray for us? Yes. yes. We love for you to pray. God, I thank you for each and every person who's watching. I thank you for what you're doing in each of their lives individually. God, I pray that you would give us new eyes to see, to see things the way that you see things and to understand things the way that you, you would have us understand. I pray, Lord, that you would use our stories, help us to be bold in sharing them, and God, that you would use each and every detail along the way to change lives, Lord, to bring people to you and ultimately bring people hope, God, the hope that only you can bring in this crazy world. We love you and we thank you for all that you're doing in each of our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord is gracious and righteous and our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. Be at rest once more, O oh my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death and my eyes from tears and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Is over me a gracious tent to sing the sea your love is like a storm your tide of mercy rain let it flood my heart again surround 
God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you're doing. And thank you for moving in big and small ways. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Echo, if anybody out there prayed that prayer of surrender with Pastor Andy for the first time or the first time in a long time, would you please text the word rescued to 97,000 or would you email us? We want to connect with you and help guide you on this journey. Now, you guys are amazing and your continued generosity continues to be amazing. Thank you so much. We are working on plans for us to meet in person in the near future and our hope is that is in August. When you heard Andy and Sam mention in the beginning that we are working on the next steps for Echo, they meant it. There have been meetings and calls and plans and we're believing that God is about to move in a big way. Join us in preparing for that. Nothing is concrete yet, but as soon as it is, you'll be the first to know. Now at Echo, you can give two ways. You can text the number below or you can go to our website. If you're able to give and you have the means, would you do so? And if you don't and if you have a need, please don't hesitate. Please don't be afraid to ask. That message that Christy and Jamie just gave was amazing. There's so much wisdom there. 
The journey is never from where you are to where you want to be in a straight line. There's always a hundred points along the way. Also remember that you are at the center of a story. You listening, you right now, you are at the center of a story. God is doing something in your life. God is calling you to be a storyteller and be willing to be vulnerable during the tough seasons. Be encouraged. Now, one last thing. If you are watching this and it's Sunday, and especially Sunday morning, would you grab your family and meet us at MLK Park, just north of Olmstead Medical Center? We will have some water and sparkling water and some treats for the kids. Pack a picnic or just come hang out. We'll be there from 1030 for a couple hours, having a blast, and we would love to see you. Echo, you are awesome. Be kind and have a great week.